Using a vast network of hiding places and safe houses, his remarkable speed on foot, and an uncanny ability to be rumored in one place while being somewhere else, John Myers continued to confound the rebels and get his information through. He was something of a one-man army around Albany and taking all sorts of initiatives. He did have a terrific reputation around Albany and mothers were supposed to threaten their children into good behavior by saying that Myers would eat them or something similar. There are all sorts of stories about him. One part that was true was that he carried a walking stick with a dagger in the handle. It was preserved by the Myers family. But he really became larger than life, which took some doing because he was a big man to start with. And with his red hair and his large size, officers who sent him out carrying dispatches quite often worried that he might be easy to catch. The legendary image that grew around Captain Myers's was absolutely unique because uh, to date we've never been able to find that any other spy had that type of image round about him. It might have uh, been to his advantage militarily that he would be known as a wandering tall German with wild hair who would peer in the window and frighten people. He uh, would be seen hither, thither and yon, here and there, and he was always in some other place than what they would report. And in that regard, I think that it aided in his general work as a spy. One story was they had a pair of shoes that were the same in the back as in front, and that, so that in tracking them they couldn't tell which way he was walking, although I think that's a bit far-fetched. Myers continued his recruiting efforts, and in 1780 he transferred his beating warrant to the King's Rangers. He was now based at Fort St. John's, just south of Montreal. Myers took a small party of his new recruits to the little village of Ballstown. Mr. Myers of Rogers Corps is returned, bringing four militia officers prisoners on the recommendation of and at the insistence of the loyal inhabitants of the neighborhood where he took them. It seems these people had been very active in oppressing and persecuting the friends of government, and their removal was a thing they had much wished. At the same time, he made prisoners of 16 others, part friends and part rebels, but dismissed them when he had brought them to a distance they could do him no harm. Colonel Paris Saint-Léger, Commandant, Fort St. John's. 